Well, I, I like to think it's my style. Uh, and yes, the last, um, I'd say the last 18 years, eight, almost 20 years, it's been abstract. I've moved f into that because I think it better expresses what I'm also experiencing and what I'm also investigating. And th I think through the, uh, an abstract uh, experience, it gives the viewer an opportunity to participate that's personal to them. And I've had countless situations where people have looked at paintings and said things or revealed things about themselves or what they identify with. And it's, to me, it's fascinating. It's almost like you get to look through this magic mirror of what people are thinking about. Um, I, I had a show uh, a bunch of years ago, and it was a big, I was part of a huge group show down at the Metro Convention Center, and I had paintings up, and this was some brand new work uh, where I had done some more experimenting, and it was different. There wasn't many other, m not too many pieces that I see anybody using these particular techniques. And I had people coming up, and they were actually running their hands down the paintings. I thought, now who does that at a show? And these were not people who were uninformed about this, but I just, I stood there thinking, wow, this is fascinating. Now the paintings could take it, they're, they're all acrylics, so it was okay, but I thought, really, they're so magnetic. They were so, something was calling to people that they had to run their hands down it, and they couldn't keep their hands off of it. I thought, so I actually did talk to a couple of people, they were there, and they said they had to touch it, they had to know what it was, and I thought, isn't that interesting? And I remember speaking to a guy who's an engineer, and he came by, and he started pointing things out. What he said, does it kind of represent? I said, well, actually, it does. So he clued in to what I was uh, aiming for. So that's to me, I think, exciting when somebody is really engaged in a piece, um, in what you're having. It's a language I've created, but some people are really picking up on it. And Words can't do some things justice. That's why it has to be experienced. It has to be seen. It has to be digested in a way. And this is actually part of a journey I've been on since in my 20s. And as an artist, I feel now, not necessarily, it's not about being brave, but I feel secure enough and confident enough to create a language and a context in which I can then talk about these bigger ideas, about the unknown universe, about the things that people are not aware of and in a way by crystallizing it it gives something in which to start that dis discussion or even that sense around what it might feel like and the meaning that it might have for them but also for me too so it's a wonderful way to start that conversation. Well, I think it, it does tie into the fact that having started so young, and this is my life path, that it's the next thing to do, and there's nothing to lose. And that's actually what I like to, when I'm working with students and teaching, it is about growth mindset. You don't put limits on yourself. And I think being an artist is indicative of the fact that you're taking risks and you're taking chances. I think also that I'm just that confident and trusting what might occur and I'm willing to work with the maybe the surprises that happened or didn't and I've actually in this series I've lost a few and things just went horribly wrong I thought okay but that's that's all to the good because that forces you now to look in this direction and there's nothing wrong with taking chances because that's actually the leading edge of thought if you don't go beyond what you know then you are on the railroad tracks of a life that does not allow you to deviate from those prescribed ideas that you're you're not going out of the box I mean if the beauty of so many art materials especially with the technology breakthroughs in acrylic in this case is that they're they're making it very easy to do work that couldn't have been possible back 10 20 30 years ago I remember when acrylics first came out in this case I actually didn't trust it because I didn't know 
how long it would last in this case. But there's been such a phenomenal science around how to help artists create works that really uh, create a, a, a different level uh, that viewers really can engage in a way that wasn't possible before. So, you know, ultimately, it really is about feeling good about yourself and knowing that it's just paint, it's just art materials. I think the key is that it's no good just having the stuff sitting in the drawer, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it costs a lot of money. You're spending quite a lot on, on just a tube of paint sometimes can run you a particular colors upwards of $30, $40. But it's still, it's there to be used. And it, it, I'm reminded of a wonderful story of a guy who built a biplane, an old, he reconstructed this plane from parts and pieces. And it would have been a beautiful museum piece, but no, he used it throughout the rest of his life and he flew that thing and he landed it and he went on adventures with it. And yes, the plane got dinged and had to be repaired constantly, but it was something that was his love of flying that machine and using it. And it gave him the joys of his life that he wanted to be up in the sky flying. Well, I say that, you know, the materials you've got, the time, you don't get the time back, might as well go for broke. And when, again, when I'm working with uh, adults or kids, I say, it's just a piece of paper, it's just a canvas. You can repaint it if it doesn't work. But doesn't that really speak to people's lives in general though? I mean, if you're not gonna take a risk there, that says something about what you're not taking a risk elsewhere. So art is, I think, a wonderful way to reveal yourself. <laughs>